Boxing King Media in association with Boxer Hamza Shiraz. Big fight for you this Saturday, uh, fighting a guy that hasn't lost in five years. So tell me why you're going to hand him his first defeat in five years. Because I'm going to do what none of his opponents have done before, inshallah. Um, I'm different to all of his other opponents. He's not no mug at the end of the day. I know what he's going to bring, but listen, I'm ready for it all. Obviously, he fought Jose Benavidez Jr. Have you sparred him, uh, Jose? Yeah, 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 I sparred him for the fight he had against this guy, actually, funnily enough. Um, done good rounds of him, done over about over 100 rounds of him. Sparring, sparring at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? Um, come fight night, I'll be a different animal. Obviously, you can gauge it. Why do you think Jose went the distance with him? Some people say you should have got the win against him. Yeah. So, obviously, what do you think he lacked and that you've got? Jose, he was, you got to remember, this guy thrives on people coming forward who are very one-paced, one-paced fighters. He thrives on it, that's what he likes. Um, so I'm just going to mix it up, I'm going to mix it up, do what I've been doing in camp, inshallah. Um, go in there and rip it away from him, man. Listen, at the end of the day, I've been working hard all my life, all my life. I never, never explained why I do what I do, but there is always a reason to as to why I'm doing it. It's not all what you see on Instagram, happy life and everything like that. It's none of that. It's, I'm working hard and I'm working hard for a reason to, to secure my future um, legacy and also financial, be, become financially, uh, financially free in the future as well. But yeah, listen, I'm too hungry for it, man. And you know, roots-wise, obviously this is an international fight. Have you got any plans to go down the domestic route or are you looking to just to sidestep that and stick on the international route? Listen, I, didn't, I think as a promoter, that's uh, obviously Frank's job and as a fighter, you can ask any fighter, they'll stand here. I could give you like 10 names and say, I'm like, I want to fight them, I want to fight them. But the likelihood of that actually happening is another story because you've got to go through contracts. And I think the casual boxing fans don't understand that. They think, oh, uh, oh he, he's scared, he's scared, this, that, the other. It don't work like that. Everyone knows how it works. Um, but yeah, anyone at 160 can get it uh, in the most respectful way possible, in the most humble approach. Um, but yeah, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I've got Saturday night to get over. I've got a good opponent in front of me. And inshallah, I'll get the job done. I'm going to put a question on you that your manager, Taz, just uh, asked me. He asked me you know, who I think is going to be the next three, four British Asian stars that could become world champions or become superstars in the world. So um, alongside yourself, which are the guys you think that could obviously make it to that level? And potentially some of you guys might clash. Um, in terms, what do you mean? Like who? Like, yeah, like obviously yourself and other British Asian fighters in the UK. Obviously, if you're going to say like, because a lot of people, you know, your team's obviously backing you as being yeah. that, that next guy. Yeah, yeah. Which other guys do you think that could, you know, be in that same sort of fold? Um, but Asian prospects, yeah. yeah. Uh, you've got loads, man. There's loads. Obviously, you've got the Azim brothers. You've got um, Akib Fiaz. You've got, I don't want to be rude and miss anyone else. Yeah, so I'm no, just no. trying to think. There's, there's loads. There's loads. You've got Umar Khan who's fighting on the undercard. You've got Khalid Ali who's also on the undercard. Um, Raheem Khan who's also with Frank Warren. Uh, who else, who else, who else? You're basically quite far ahead with the experience and the amount of fights you've had and you're probably closest to a world title than, than anyone. Yep. So who do you reckon's just behind you? That's an easy question to answer. Uh, just behind me, just behind me. I'd say it's either Akib or um, Adam. Either Akib or Adam, yeah. But um, listen, at the end of the day, it's not... Um, I think, you know, with, with, our, with our Asian culture, everything's more of a competition than it is us supporting each other. So I don't think it's about who gets there first or anything like that. It's about if we get there, we get there together, get there collectively. Happy days, man. Happy days. The more, the merrier. Do you know what I mean? We're here to take over as British Pakistanis, British South Asians. We're the minority in the sport. So I think shed it, shedding like arguing with each other and shed, shed it in negative light is not, what, we're not, we're not, we're not really what we want to do at the end of the day. But yeah, definitely them too. 100% agree with you there. And obviously weight-wise, obviously you moved up to middleweight. Is a plan to stick at this weight because you're 20, 20, 22, 23 now, so you probably stopped growing, but do you see yourself getting, getting higher? Yeah, of course, of course. Listen, um, like I said before, you know, I'll probably go up to 168. But as for now, 160, I'll be here for the foreseeable future. Um, hopefully I can secure a world title at this, at this weight, man, inshallah. Let's see where it goes, innit? I could maybe one summer just blow up and develop muscle mass and something like that. I'm 23, I'm still growing, so let's see where we go from here. Well, you're talking about muscle mass, it's not stopped you knocking 11 guys out, so yeah. the power's there. So yeah. Hamza, it's been nice meeting you for the first time, so all the best Saturday night. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one, yeah.